I have a riddle for you. What is so cold that it burns, so solid that it turns instantly into a gas, and so good at keeping cells still that it will make containers explode? Hi, my name is Susanna Harris, and this is the Science of Lab Safety brought to you by Lab Safety Specialists. We might already know that we need to follow certain rules while working in a science laboratory, but we might not know exactly why we need to follow those rules other than to avoid getting into trouble. So let's explore the exciting, the unexpected, and sometimes the even scary facts behind the science of lab safety. Let's be honest, dry ice is pretty cool. Well, actually it's super cold. Compared to the ice that's in our water, which is kept around negative 18 degrees Celsius or zero degrees Fahrenheit, dry ice is way colder. Dry ice is kept as cold as negative 110 degrees Celsius or negative 166 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's talk about dry ice, why it's so cold and how it can get very dangerous very quickly. We call it dry ice because of something called sublimation. See, that the ice in our glass will eventually melt into liquid water, and if we heat it up enough, we will eventually get steam. Dry ice is actually the frozen form of carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide doesn't melt into a liquid, it just becomes directly a gas. This process is called sublimation. You might be wondering why we're talking about dry ice in lab safety. And yes, it's cold, you don't want to touch it with your bare hands because your skin cells can start dying in the first 10 seconds, but there might be something even more dangerous about it than just being cold. Sublimation of dry ice can be dangerous because of two things. Dry ice doesn't release poison. It actually just releases the gaseous form of carbon dioxide, which is what we breathe out, but you still don't want to breathe in the vapors. The area around dry ice has very low levels of oxygen, so you wouldn't want to try to breathe in these vapors for an extended period of time because you'd eventually be very dizzy. So no human-sized confined spaces. But storing your dry ice in a smaller confined space could be even more dangerous. Let's use this sturdy plastic container to hold the ice. You can already see the gas building up and spilling over. We can actually see this happening if we put a balloon on top. Because the sublimation point of dry ice is negative 78.5 degrees Celsius or negative 109 degrees Fahrenheit, these gases will continue to be released at room temperature until the ice has completely disappeared. In about 24 hours, five pounds of dry ice will turn from solid to gas. But what if this wasn't a balloon? What if it was just a regular lid on a closed container and you walked away for a little bit? While the pressure would continue to build and if the container wasn't strong enough, it could expand, crack, and even explode. Let's go over a quick guide to make sure that you're using dry ice as safely as possible. First of all, handle dry ice with approved gloves and all of your regular personal protective equipment. You might also use tongs to pick up the dry ice. Never use dry ice in closed and confined spaces. Make sure the area is always well ventilated. Never ever tightly seal containers that aren't approved to contain dry ice. From keeping your groceries cold in transit, freezing your biological samples like that, dry ice is pretty great. But let's make sure to be careful and keep the accidental party tricks out of the lab.